opinion business or not necessarily the opinion of the station or its management. Material on this program is intended for general information only and should not be taken as specific investment, tax, or legal advice. <laughs> AM KEXB presents Texas Money and Business. From investing your money to running a business. Get all the information you need to know on Texas Money and Business. It is Texas Money and Business. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program today. We have a new member of our family that we are, are delighted to, to share with you. And we want to get to know uh, today. So we're glad you're here joining us for the program. Uh, we uh, have the opportunity to welcome the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys. Now, this is a group of uh, four local law firms firms that belong to a larger organization called the American Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys. Now, the American AEPA is an exclusive national organization of attorneys that are devoted to the highest standards of estate planning. Each member uh, maintains 36 hours of CLE, each focusing on uh, estate planning and tax law. Now, because they're a national organization and have uh, members in almost 50 states, they can help their clients with out-of-state estate planning issues as well, not limited to just Texas here. So the Academy has been recognized as a consumer legal source and has been quoted in numerous publications. You might have seen them uh, mentioned in uh, Money Magazine. Smart Money, CNN Money, uh, the Los Angeles Times, Chicago Tribune, uh, among uh, many. The DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys was formed when the Dallas-Fort Worth attorney members saw the need to educate the public about the importance of proper estate planning. And so we are just delighted to have the opportunity to uh, to uh, welcome them as a, uh, a staple uh, guest here on Mondays, here on KEXB, Experts in Business in Texas Money and Business. I want to welcome uh, Brandon McGee. And Brandon, uh, you are one of the uh, four, uh, represent one of the four law firms uh, that make up the uh, the local academy here. And it's, uh, it's good to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Ron. It's wonderful to be here. And it's very special to be here right at the beginning of the new year and to kick off the new year with our new family, KEXB. And we're very excited about a lot of great things to come in this year of 2016. You know, uh, Brandon, I was looking over a lot of the information uh, before we, we have our show today, and I'm really excited. I think our audience is really going to embrace this, the, the message and the passion behind estate planning, the reasoning, the importance of it, and we'll, we'll stress that here in just a bit. Let's get to know you a little bit here. Tell us about yourself, your family, and your law firm. Well, Ron, my name is Brandon McGee, and I'm an attorney licensed to practice in the state of Texas. I've been licensed since 2002. I practice in Tarrant County, Texas, and I have an office in downtown Fort Worth and another office in South Lake, Texas. I am a member of the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys, and we have three other wonderful attorneys in our academy, one being Mr. David Wynn, who has an office in Fort Worth as well, and also an office in Grapevine, Texas. We also have Mr. Fred Heyman, uh, who's an outstanding attorney, who has offices in Allen and Frisco, Texas. And we have Ms. Carrie Qureshi, another wonderful attorney, with an office in Frisco, Texas. So I'm a part of this organization. Um, I uh, have a great passion for estate planning. I haven't always been an estate planning attorney. I've also been a litigator in the past. And for reasons I'll go into later in the show, uh, a few years ago, decided to start shifting my focus so that I could help folks from the front end of things avoid problems rather than kind of being an emergency room surgeon and dealing with problems after they've developed. I wanted to get on the front end and be able to, to construct things legally so that my clients wouldn't have to face these big issues and, and these traumatic legal situations that oftentimes really can tear families apart. You know, Brandon, this is really incredible to talk about this very thing that we will be talking about on a weekly basis here on the program. Uh, is there is there really sort of an urgent, uh, are we in an urgent state here in, in society and, and uh, with people that, that really don't have their self set up within a state or with a trust or with a will? Tell us about the urgency of this. Ron, the urgency is that you never know when something bad's going to happen. You never know when somebody's going to pass away. You never know when somebody's going to have a debilitating injury or a stroke, which causes them to be, become mentally impaired. So from the standpoint of things in life being unknown in the future, there is urgency. And, and what we like to communicate to our clients is that really there's four documents. If you simply have you and your spouse, if you're married, have four documents in place each, you can avoid almost all the pitfalls that are out there. Now, obviously, we can't, unfortunately, prevent you know bad things from happening, people from passing away, but we can make sure that, that you, if you're still alive, or your loved ones, if you're the one who goes, are left in the best position possible, and it really is not it's not complicated. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's something that when we sit down with clients and explain it, 
they kind of have that aha moment, a light bulb goes off and they say, I get it, I understand. And so it is urgent from that standpoint, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a easy solution that we love. We have a great passion for, for helping our clients out with and getting them to that point that they feel comfortable. You bring up a good point, Brandon, about the, uh, the fact that we, we just don't know when our time is going to, to expire. We're not promised tomorrow. We saw over the Christmas holidays the tragedies that happened with the disasters here in North Texas. Uh, we need to be prepared. And so that's the message that we really want to convey throughout as a common thread through uh, not only this conversation, but the, the ones to come here on the program. Brandon McGee visiting uh, with us, well, and getting to know him, of course, here on the program and welcoming him to the KEXP family with Texas Money and Business. I'm Ron Taylor. We have a great guest to get to coming up as well. Brandon, uh, just for a couple more questions here as we kind of uh, acclimate and get to know you a little bit, uh, let's talk for a moment about the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys. I know uh, I have a very good feeling that this is more than just a mutual admiration society. You guys have sure. a really good reason for coming together and pooling your 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 resources and, and doing what you do best to, to serve a common goal, right? Yes, and actually we're all a member of a larger organization called the American Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys. And uh, we are all very humbled and honored to be a part of that organization. It's a phenomenal organization. They have incredible resources, uh, everything from software to educational opportunities to, to support um, for the attorneys, for the attorney staff members. And so the four DFW Academy members here in Dallas-Fort Worth were, were all also members of that larger group. But okay. we thought it would make sense, since we're all here, why don't we all come together in the DFW area and combine our resources, uh, combine our, our knowledge? Because let's face it, there's going to be you know a thing or two that, that I know that maybe Carrie or Fred don't know. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of things Carrie and Fred know that maybe I don't know. So we, we, all come, we all decided to come together so that we can offer a better product to our clients. Yeah. And I believe that, that we are doing that by, by joining forces. You know, four minds is always going to be superior to one, and True. so I think that we we take the best ideas uh, so that we can provide a, a wonderful product to our clients. You guys have been in, in formation for a little over a year, I understand. Have you found it to be effective uh, as you've infused uh, your your resources? Yes, together? absolutely. Uh, it's been effective on a lot of different levels. The most important one is how can we best serve our clients? How can we do a better job for our clients? And one of the great things is that if if one of the four of us Academy members uh, has a client who has an issue that maybe we haven't dealt with before, or maybe we don't know the we know some ways to proceed, but we don't know the best way to proceed. We'll reach out to our other friends in the academy, get feedback from them, and we always come up with a with a wonderful solution for whatever our client's issue is. Very good, Brandon McGee with the McGee Law Firm, one of four great law firms that make up the DFW, uh, the, you know, the chapter here that, that we're going to be talking about. Uh, solution. That make up the uh, DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys, and uh, they're going to be a staple here on the program on Mondays, and so uh, you can plan on joining us right here and hearing a lot of great information about estate planning, the importance of it, why it's important to you, uh, why this is something that you, you should uh, you know wrap your wrap your mind around, wrap your heart around, and uh, take care of. It is really a, a scriptural mandate for us to, to you know make sure that we have our affairs in order. We want to make sure we bless our children, our grandchildren, two generations, uh, but also the peace of mind. And you need a professional, folks. You don't want to go to a uh, to something online or a little, uh, you know, a little quickie little form. That's not going to be comprehensive and turnkey enough for you. That's going to cover all the areas and, more importantly, all the changing areas. Uh, this is a very, uh, you know, a very dynamic thing here. It's not something you just kind of set up, Brandon, and just walk away from. And so we'll talk about that here in a bit, too. going to take our first break here on the program. You're listening to uh, KEXB, Experts in Business. It is Texas Money in Business and the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys, our guest today. It's good to have you here. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Your experts in business throughout North Texas. AM, KEXB. Experts in business throughout North Texas. Now, back to Texas Money and Business. Back with you on Texas Money and Business. I am Ron Taylor. It's so good to have you here. We hope that this information is a, a great blessing to you and then very informative to you and uh, that you'll join us every Monday at this time to learn more about uh, estate planning and the importance of doing uh, things like this with a wonderful group of attorneys. Today, we have Brandon McGee with the McGee Law Firm. And Brandon, it's good to have you right here. And you have a guest on our first outing today here. Tell us who we have. Yes, Ron, I do. I brought a wonderful guest with me today. Very excited to have to have him here. It's Mr. Jimmy Reed. Jimmy is a seasoned, longtime DFW residential real estate investor. He is the, the president and the owner of the One RE Club. 
He is also the owner of Real Estate Equity Development. So welcome, Jimmy. Hey, Brandon, appreciate you being here. Ron, thanks for having us on. Sure. And Jimmy, I know that in your business, what you're primarily doing is looking for good deals on real estate. Is that correct? That's correct, Brandon. Uh, in the new year here, 2016, the one thing we found out from the last two years, it's really hard to find a good deal. And one of the ways we've specialized now in finding deals has been through probate. And of course, it's going to be interesting to hear you today talking about when people do not set up probate or estate planning, it actually opens the door for guys like me as a real estate investor to come in and actually get some good deals. And that's absolutely correct. I'm glad you mentioned that. Some of the listeners might be wondering, well, this is an estate planning show, Brandon. You're an attorney. Why, why'd you bring on a real estate investor? <laughs> and the reason is, is because we want to show you how guys like Jimmy can come in and get a great deal on your real estate or on, on your family's real estate if you don't have proper estate planning. And so Jimmy, over the years, has seen many scenarios where things were not done properly, things were unfortunately done poorly, and him or somebody that works for him was able to come in and get a steal on some real estate. And listeners, I know that, that folks, they don't want to sit here and hear me recite uh, different legal uh, analysis and statutory law, we're going to lose you, you're going to move to the next station. So what I want to give you right now is a real life example of a family who did not do proper estate planning. And we're going to look at where things went wrong and where if, if they had done, if they had just had four documents, folks, four documents, their things would have turned out completely differently for them. Okay, I'm going to, to, to change the name here because we can't discuss actual client names on the air, obviously. I'm going to call this family the Miller family. And the Miller family lives in Keller, Texas. And there's Bob, Susan. They're a married couple. They're 65 years old. And there's Johnny and there's Julie. They're the children of Bob and Susan, the adult children. Now, Bob and Susan uh, worked hard their whole lives. Susan was a school teacher. Bob was an insurance agent. Um, they, at the age of 65, they decided they wanted to retire. They had about $600,000 in financial assets, retirement assets. They owned a home that was valued at $250,000. And they had worked hard and they were very proud of themselves. Um, Bob and Susan had absolutely no estate planning documents, not a trust, not a will, not a medical power of attorney, not a financial power of attorney, nothing. They also had, again, the two children, Johnny and Julie. Now, Johnny and Julie are the curious case of uh, two children who are born into the same family. They come from the same gene pool. They're raised in the same home with the same values, but they turn out completely different. Fortunately, Julie had done very well. She did well in high school, stayed out of trouble, went to college, went to medical school, and she was actually a uh, practicing pediatrician here in the DFW area. Their son, Johnny, was 25 years old. He had had drug problems in high school been to drug rehab two or three times, dropped out of high school, never went to college, was just could never get it together and had a lot of, honestly, unfortunately, substance abuse issues that, that caused him to, to be the black sheep of the family. Well, what happened is, is at about the time that Bob and Susan wanted to retire, Bob had a stroke, okay? And it was, a, it was not a stroke that took his life, but it was a debilitating stroke that caused him to basically lose partial control, not only of his body, but more importantly of his mind. And when this happened, Susan had to go hire me to go to guardianship court, to go to, excuse me, probate court in Tarrant County, Texas to seek guardianship over Bob. And when Susan did this, she had to pay me several thousand dollars. She had to pay court fees and cost, and she had to um, wheel Bob into court, which is humiliating, so that the judge could declare him incompetent. Also, what Susan had to do was she had to file something called an inventory and appraisement, which listed all of the assets and debts of, of the Miller family, um, and it was public record with the Tarrant County clerk and always will be public record, public record with the Tarrant County clerk. So that's mistake number one. Here's mistake number two. About six months later, Bob had another major stroke. Bob passed away. Bob did not leave any, any of his money or his assets in trust. Um, I talked to them about this. I said, hey, we need to get this done. We need to get that done. Let's get these documents together. And Susan kept saying, 
yes, I'm going to. I know we need to. I'm going to. I'm just so busy. I'm overwhelmed. Well, I'm, and I'm sure she thought, you know, she was hoping Bob was going to recover, get better, their lives would get back to normal, and they would enjoy the retirement that they had always planned for. Well, again, folks, unfortunately, that did not happen. And what happened is, is, is Bob died with no estate planning documents. And when they went to probate his estate, number one, it was extremely expensive. It was extremely time consuming. And guess what else? 25% of his estate belonged to Johnny and Julie. Okay. So Susan got one half of the estate, which was hers is for being his married partner. She got another 25%. Um, again, for uh, as part of the community property for being his married partner, and then Johnny and Julie got to split the other 25%. That was, you know, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but $150,000 going to Johnny Miller, who has a uh, substantial substance abuse problem and is just completely out of control. So this was a huge disaster. Um, Johnny ended up overdosing, I believe, within two or three months. Fortunately, he lived, uh, but he did overdose, ended up in jail at some point, blew all the money. Okay, guys, so now after I've told you this scenario about the Miller family, let's just back up and talk a little bit about the things that they could have done that would have prevented all of this. Number one, if they had had a simple document uh, called a medical power of attorney, well, excuse me, two documents, a medical power of attorney and a financial power of attorney, then once Bob became mentally incapacitated, Susan could have stepped into his shoes and immediately started making medical decisions for him as well as financial decisions. There would have been no reason to pay me several thousand dollars to go to probate court and to seek his guardianship, to have to wheel him in there and to have to file an inventory and appraisement, which lists all their assets and all their debts for the public to see. Critical mistake number two, Susan and Bob should have number one, had all of their assets in a trust and number two, had what we call a pour over will. If they had had all the assets in the trust and at least a pour over will, well, number one, with a the trust, they would not have even have had to go to probate court. Bob would have left everything to Susan. Susan would have remained in complete control of all assets, inherited all assets without going to probate court. Johnny would not have touched one hot cent of that money, none. Number two, even if they didn't have a trust, if they at least had a will where Bob left everything to Susan, they still would have had to go to court, to probate court, but Susan would have inherited everything, Johnny would have inherited nothing, and the, the, the family money and the family legacy would have remained intact. So that's very important stuff, very real life scenarios that we see every day in our practice, guys. And uh, Jimmy, I wanted to bring you in. I know you had mentioned to me uh, a while back that you've also seen some bad situations in your time as a real estate investor. Can you tell the, the listeners a little bit about that? You bet. In fact, I'll give them a little bit of a background so they kind of know how I fit in here. I am a real estate investor. I've been investing for nearly 30 years. Uh, and back in the early 90s, I actually started teaching real estate investing. Uh, teaching people how to wholesale, how to rehab, and of course, started to learn how to find deals, not just your average realtor, MLS listings, uh, newspaper, but started looking into probate. And over the years, I found that some of the best deals I ever did actually came through probate. So as with Brandon here, he comes to the Fort Worth Real Estate Club. The Real Estate Club meets once a month, and it's a networking area. It's a, a group of people coming together. Everyone's welcome and they come to network. We meet the second Thursday of each month at the Botanic Garden. Uh, and it's a great place to find real estate deals, learn from seasoned pros, and it, we welcome new people. And Brandon comes in and he's one of our preferred vendors. So when Brandon and I were talking, I was telling him about what we do, how we do things. And I was telling him about one of the deals that actually his office had to help us on when we were buying the property and then we turned around to resell it. We had uh, been referred through uh, a gentleman in Dallas about a house in Fort Worth. A guy had inherited a property, did not get correct advice from an attorney. They told him he did not have to probate the will. Well, several years had gone by, he brought it to me. We looked at it, I made him an offer, and then we found out, of course, he couldn't do what he wanted to do because they had not probated the will. Needless to say, it was in a low income area, so we made an offer on the property, and this was just last year, so this was in 2015. And so we got the property, put it under contract for only $5,000 because he had none of this stuff set up or planned. Well, needless to say, we ended up spending about 3000 to get it back through the courts, get it probated, and then we turned around and sold that property really quick because the market is hot out there. So this little house was a little one-bedroom house. It was in pretty good shape. It was in a low-income area on the west side of Fort Worth. 
but we still had to go through all this paperwork just because they did not do the correct things that were needed. And they would have done them, but they actually were given bad advice. So when talking to Brandon, Brandon spoke at the club uh, back in 2014, and I was telling him uh, some of the other deals we ran across and just over the years. And, and most of the properties we find through probate tend to have a lot of equity. But what we also find is people just don't want to deal with it. They're like, I don't want to mess with it. They hold taxes. There's weed liens, code enforcement's on them. But it's a great way. So today to be here saying, okay, you guys really need to listen to Brandon if you want to protect your assets, meaning you want to have the correct estate planning. In fact, we have a scripture. We're, we're a Christian company. We have a scripture at the club, and it's Proverbs 13, 20. And it's why we formed the club. It says, walk with the wise and become wise. So, you know, Brandon comes to the club, he does some seminars. Uh, it's great for you to learn what you need to do. My end, on the other hand, I teach people how to do what everybody loves to do in real estate is go find a great deal. And one of the things we've learned, I don't know if this statistic is still good, but about 70% of Americans don't have a will. Yes, it, the numbers are startling. Yeah. And the numbers of Americans who don't have their assets in a trust uh, is even more startling. That's absolutely yeah. correct. So for us, doing real estate trainings, and uh, one of the things we specialize is teaching people how to find deals in probate, which means we're going to look for the people Brandon has not got set up properly. Uh, I learned it on my own uh, just over the years, but I learned personally in our own family with my own grandmother's estate. Of course, I ended up buying that house from the relatives, but it was a mess to see what happens because most people, when they do actually set up a will, what I learned, the first mistake is they always tend to point as an executor, someone who should never be the executor. And it's always been a trend to pick the oldest child. Mm -hmm. And I almost made those mistakes nearly 30 years ago when I was setting up my estates. And by the way, just so you know, when setting up your estates with Brandon or whoever you're using, one thing you need to know is you constantly need to keep looking into it and changing it because as laws change, the markets change, your situations change, it's going to become a very important issue on how you're set up. If you don't just set up a wheel and think it's good and you're good for the next 20 years, there's going to be a lot of changes. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, let's take another break here real quick here and come back. Great conversation. We'll interrupt for just a moment and come back and pick up with more with Jimmy Reed, who is uh, uh, Brandon McGee's guest here. It's the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys. We're having a great conversation here on Texas Money and Business on KEXB. We'll be back with more coming up. Stay with us. The information you need to know, it's Texas Money and Business. And we're back here on Texas Money and Business. So good to have you right here on the show. My name is Ron Taylor, and a wonderful show underway here today. We have Brandon McGee with the McGee Law Firm, and uh, a wonderful guest here. Uh, Jimmy uh, Reed is uh, joining us as well. And Brandon, uh, just a, a wonderful, uh, obviously a, a great friend and someone that is very passionate about what he does and someone that's a great resource to you uh, that serves you. You can serve him in many ways, and so just a wonderful thing. Uh, let's continue talking about... Uh, some of the things that we were discussing in the last segment. Thanks, Ron. Guys, in the last segment, we were I was giving you a real scenario of the Miller family here in the DFW area, family who had about $800,000 in assets, family who was educated, a family who was professional, and a family who had absolutely zero estate planning documents. And unfortunately, we come across this a lot. I cannot tell you how many clients I have, you know, they've been bankers, they've been people in the financial industry, they've been doctors, and they have next to no estate planning. It, it never ceases to amaze me. Um, it, so if, if, if you're in that position, don't feel bad. Don't feel that, that even though you kind of had made a mistake up to this point, don't beat yourself up. What I want to encourage you to do is to give us a call at the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys. And I'm going to give you that number right now. The number is 817-877-877. 9944. Again, it's 817-877-9944. And we have four different attorneys with offices all over the DFW area. So if you call in, we'll just let you know where the different offices are and you can pick which one suits you best. And all we'll do is, is sit down with you and discuss your family, your assets, and what goals you hope to achieve with estate planning and then we'll craft a plan that is specific to you and your family. There is no cookie cutter plan. Every, you know, it's like a snowflake, literally. Every plan that I do is a little bit different. I've never had any that are the exact same as another one. That being said, guys, what I wanna to talk to you about now are the four basic documents that you need. And it's, it's 
unbelievable that it's this simple, but all you need are four documents. And, and I'm going to talk to you from the standpoint um, as if you're somebody with a spouse, okay? You may be a, a widow or a widower. You may be divorced. You may just be single. Um, the, all these concepts apply to you no matter what your marital status is, but most, most folks that come to us are married, so I'll talk from that standpoint. Number one, you need a trust, okay? Particularly if you own real estate, you need a trust. And a trust can do a lot of amazing things for you. It can help you avoid probate court uh, after your spouse passes or help your loved ones, your children after you pass. Whoever the ones are who are left behind can avoid probate court, period, end of story, if your assets, particularly your real estate, are in a trust. Other things that it can do, it, it can shelter you from what we would call estate tax or death tax. And if you're over a certain limit right now, it's around 5.4 million, uh, can change every two years depending on the, the climate of Congress and the president. But if you're over that amount and you're gonna have issues of having to pay the government possibly 40% of your estate after you or your spouse or your parents pass away, we can help you avoid that. Cer certain circumstances, we can help you avoid uh, legal judgments if, 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 when trusts are drafted in, in a specific manner. Um, and just many great things that, that a trust can do. And another, the second document is what we call a pour over will. And it's just like a regular will, but we call it a pour over will because our hope is that you will never have to use it. Uh, our hope is that all your assets are in the trust and you never have to go to probate court. But in case you acquire an asset after you draft your trust and you forget to come see us and have it placed in the trust, you at least have that pour over will there that will capture that asset so you can go to probate court and probate it rather than having to probate without a will, which is much, much more costly, much more time consuming and you're subject to strict state laws. You're, you're not dealing with constructing the will the way that you want it. The third and fourth documents, I'll kind of talk about them together because they're, they, they perform different functions, but they're similar. Medical power of attorney and financial power of attorney. Medical power of attorney, you're turning over to a third party in the event that you become mentally incapacitated, the ability to make your medical decisions for you. A uh, critical one is you have to be on life support to remain alive. You know, the, the hospital, the doctor is just going to keep you on there it, because you don't have a medical directive or you don't have a medical power of attorney. They're probably just going to keep you on there until you die. Whereas if you have a medical directive or power of attorney, you can have a loved one step in and say, look, you know, I have the power of attorney here. He or she informed me that they don't want to be in a position where they're, you know, possibly in a vegetative or coma type state existing on life support. Just let them pass. Let them move on. Um, you can have that power for the person to do that. Uh, fourth document is a financial power of attorney, and this is similar to medical power of attorney. If you become mentally incapacitated or your spouse does, you can step into your spouse's shoes and transact financial business on their behalf. You can buy and sell real estate. You can liquidate financial accounts. You can take out loans. All the things that you would normally need your spouse's signature to do and their approval to do as a married couple, you have the authority to do it through, the, through this document. So guys, it's, it's four documents. If you have these four documents, you really are set up in a wonderful way with estate planning here in the state of Texas and in the United States of America. Now, what's key to this the four documents need to be drafted properly, okay? If they're not drafted properly, they're worthless. Uh, you might as well throw them in the fireplace this winter and you know, use them to light the logs. Um, but they need to be drafted properly. And at the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys, that's, uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to, to help guide you to the best solution for your family and to make sure it gets done properly so that it's effective when the time comes that you need to use it. Yeah, you know, and that's, that's a very good point, Brandon, is the, the, the effectiveness of this and, and the proper uh, you know, drafting, as you mentioned. And these are things that folks will not find if they go elsewhere or if they, if they go with, you know, without a professional in something like this. This is very important information, folks. Brandon, real quick, talk about uh, what happens as a default uh, measure with the state of Texas when someone does not have their, their, their you know, things in order, uh, the state of Texas uh, sort of takes over, don't they? Tell us about that. Well, there's laws that are codified in the uh, estate planning and probate code. And basically, if you pass away, and let's say that you have a home that's paid for, let's say you have a 401k and a savings account, <clears throat> there's strict laws on the books that say how your assets are going to be distributed. Number one, they're going to be liquidated. So if you're hoping, well, I'd like to leave the house to my son and my financial accounts to my daughter, guess what? That may very well not happen because more than likely everything is going to be liquidated and distributed 
per these rules. And basically, let's take a, a cookie cutter scenario here where you have a husband and wife and you have two kids, kind of like I talked about earlier in the show. What's going to happen is if the, if the husband passes away, because usually we go first, right, guys? Mm -hmm. But the husband passes away, the wife is going to get 50 percent of the estate value of the estate right off the top um, because it, it uh, she's a married party. It's, it's her joint property. Then you have another 50 percent left that is considered to belong to the husband. Well, the wife is going to get 25 percent of that. Um, and then the kids are going to get 25. So however many kids there are, it doesn't matter, but the kids are going to split the 25% up. And the problem that you can have in this is there's absolutely no flexibility uh, in, in who gets what. Um, oftentimes, folks want to leave everything to their spouse. And then when that spouse dies, they're going to leave everything to the kids. Um, but they don't want to just start giving the kids money after they pass. And other problems like we spoke of earlier, if you have a child who you're estranged from, you don't trust them. And I'll tell you, we hear this one a lot. You don't trust their spouse. You have an adult child who's married. And the last thing you want is for their husband or wife to get their hands on to get their hands on your money. Uh, all those things can be prevented by proper estate planning. Yeah. You know, and real quick, uh, gentlemen, and Jimmy, uh, chime in on this one here, too, because, you know, guys, this is a very volatile, emotional state for people to be in when these processes are going on. Uh, oftentimes people are grieving uh, and, and they're in a, in, in a state of mind of grieving and, and when they're having to have these things, uh, you know, sort of talked about on the table. And so, Jimmy, it's interesting. I'm sure you've seen maybe again cases like this, too, that you would agree with what Brandon was saying. Uh, it's, a, it's a really volatile, emotional time for people during this, isn't it? Absolutely. In fact, uh, because we do real estate trainings, the one training that always stands out from everything we do from wholesaling to foreclosures, what it may be, when it comes to probate, we always tell our students when we're doing that training, you, it's a different approach. You know, in wholesaling, it's kind of a garage sale. Hey, we buy houses cash. Uh, you know, it's a lot of marketing. Well, there's a lot of marketing that gets involved with probate, but you're actually building relationships. You're going to be talking to people who have lost a loved one. You don't want to be standing at the door as they come back from a funeral going, hey, I want to buy your house. Exactly. That's that's not good. Uh, but you do want to be able to approach them and let them know there are issues that are going to occur. And if they don't do these things in time, you're going to have other issues, especially if it wasn't set up correctly in the beginning, which Brandon can help them do that. With us, what we do, in fact, if anybody ever wants to know how we, you know, we teach real estate, you can always visit our website, which is jimmyreed.net. That's J-I-M-M-Y-R-E-E-D.net. We do everything, like I said, from mentoring, wholesaling, but probate is one of our most popular. Mm -hmm. Because, again, the statistics say, well, 100% of the people are going to die. 70% of them don't have wills. And the other 30% are probably still going to have issues because they probably didn't do the paperwork right or they put the wrong executor in place. And Brandon and I, you know, we can feed off each other because, again, we – Brandon's an attorney, of course, handling probates, uh, corporations, LLCs, things like that. But his wife is also a fee attorney at the title company that we use, and he's right there in the Fort Worth office. So I can go from one end of the building talking to Brandon, or I can go to the other end of the building and do a closing with Shyla. And Shyla is one of the people that's our escrow officer that's at the real estate club. Hmm. By the way, if you're interested in the real estate club – just go to jimmyreed.net, and above the tab, you can see a tab that says Network. Just follow the link up there. It'll take you to the club. Or you can just go to the club itself's website, which is the number one, reclub.com. So it's one, reclub.com. Great place to come and network. But, yeah, when you're going to do real estate, it's it's a it's an unusual business. It's a fun business. It can be a rough business. I mean, I do everything from houses uh, apartments. We deal in the rental end of the business. We do the buy sell. We do trains. I've even done international investing. We just closed last year a property we had in Panama. Wow. And we had a lot of things that went bad there because, again, you have to have a good team, a good network. Mm -hmm. And I was glad Brandon asked me to come in because, again, that's the kind of the network. Yeah. Uh, at the club in January, we're going to have a guy coming in from Houston that's going to talk about creative financing. Well, a lot of people in probate or in the situation where they haven't set up the probate, they they don't know what they can or cannot do. Well, just incredible. Guys, let's take uh, another break here. We have our last segment coming up here. We'll wrap up some of our conversation. Make sure you have some great contact information and some uh, some parting thoughts here when we continue on Texas Money and Business. And uh, we're talking, of course, with uh, uh, Brandon McGee and uh, Jimmy Reed. We'll be right back. That money. 
the best financial and business experts in DFW is Texas Money and Business. We're back in here on Texas Money and Business and the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys and uh, Brandon McGee with McGee Law Firm uh, joining us. His guest, uh, Jimmy Reed here as well, and uh, a great and lively conversation here. Boy, true colors come out, uh, Brandon, when, uh, you know, family members uh, you know, begin to see things uh, taken away from them in situations. Let's talk about emotions and things like that. Yes, absolutely, Ron, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. One of the real travesties when folks do not have good estate planning in place is what I call the family feud or the family bloodbath that can result. And I have seen this in my practice many times over the years. And I'll tell you what, oftentimes it's we're not talking about siblings left behind who have always disliked each other or held a grudge. We're talking oftentimes about siblings who got along pretty well. Yeah. You know, maybe they weren't best friends in the world, but they got along well. They interacted well. And mom and dad die or mom passes away, dad passes away. There's no parent left. There's a chunk of money on the table. There's assets on the table. And there's no specific estate planning in place that designates what's going to go to who, what amounts, who gets the house, those kinds of things. It can become an absolute bloodbath, wow. okay? And it's it's horrible. And in a lot of these circumstances, the siblings never they never make up. They never reunite. It's permanent damage has been done. And folks, I'm sure all of you out there who have children, whether they're they're young, they're adults, I'm sure none of you want to leave that kind of a legacy. You don't want to leave the legacy of your children getting into a huge fight and not liking each other and fighting over your assets. And with proper estate planning, it is so easy to avoid that. It's almost impossible not to avoid it, okay? Um, all you have to do is get in place a trust, one trust for a married couple, a pour over will for each spouse, uh, financial power of attorney and medical power of attorney for each spouse with specific instructions as to what's to happen if somebody becomes incapacitated. And when, you know, it, again, it's gonna happen to all of us. None of us get out of here alive when, when people start passing away. Leave your specific instructions in place in a properly drafted estate planning document. You will not have any of these problems, okay? Mm -hmm. And if your children wanna be upset at you because you didn't leave them what they wanted, well, so be it, you're gone, <laughs> okay? <laughs> You'd probably rather have that than them being angry at their brother and sister for the next 40 years. Yeah. Um, and guys, I wanna let you know that at the DFW of Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys, that is what we do. Our goal is to sit down with an individual or with a family and craft a plan that is specifically tailored to that family, to your needs, to your wants, your wishes, your desires. We look at the assets that you have, how you want to distribute them, and we come up with the best plan possible for your family because it's different for every family. And we use the same vehicles. We always go with the trust, the wills, the power of attorneys, but we put different language in those vehicles. And um, guys, the way that you can reach us is by calling 817 877-9944. Again, the number is 817-877-9944. And we have offices all over the DFW Metroplex, four wonderful law firms for you to work with. And you can just pick and choose which office is, you know, more convenient for you, which attorney you'd like to visit with. When you go to the website, dfwaepa.com, dfwaepa.com, you'll want to bookmark that site and uh, visit that often because a lot of great seminars are offered there. You'll keep up with the calendar, and these are free seminars that are very, very in, uh, in, in, you know, informative and uh, a great help that all of you guys pull together and, and do uh, for the seminars and other the, the other great resources on the website, dfwaepa.com, and the number again, 817-877-9944. Brandon, uh, Jimmy, you know, it's interesting. Uh, it, statistically, we're living longer, and we have more years in our in our retirement years to finance, more years to uh, to plan for things like this. Uh, it, Brandon, it sounds to me like very quickly, uh, th there's not a bad time uh, to do this. There's right? absolutely not a bad time. I'll tell you, the only scenario in which you don't want to do this is if you already have somebody who's mentally incapacitated. I see. If you if you've already had an Alzheimer or a dementia type diagnosis or a bad stroke and memory impairment, uh, the documents are most likely going to be invalid, so you don't want to do it. But up until that point, if you're mentally sound and you're alive and well here on planet Earth, there's not a bad time. Um, and in fact, 
anytime you don't do it is a bad time not to do right. it. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, every time is a good time as long as you're, you're of sound mind and, and, and alive and well here on planet Earth. Very good. Jimmy, it's great to have you on the program today. Our time is drawing very Appreciate close it. Uh, and very near. Uh, I have just a quick question for you. you I love the scripture that you, you have as your, as your founding scripture on and, and what you do. Uh, why that scripture out of Proverbs? Uh, you know, I, a lot of our trainings use real estate scripture, uh, real estate scripture. There's a lot of real estate <laughs> yeah. actually in the scriptures. Yeah. Um, and I just, I looked at that when I was creating my business and I went, you know, that's really who we're about. Yeah. But I also, over the years, found out that I really liked Hosea 4, 6. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, yeah. You know, and, the, and when people don't know what to do, uh, then it opens the door for guys like me. And it's not that, you know, everybody's like, oh, you're going out there buying this stuff. It's like, it's just solving people's problems. Mm -hmm. I was wanting to tag on to Brandon with the inheritance issues. You know, there is a scripture that says it's a good man who leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Well, we dealt with an estate one time that had seven heirs. Wow. All of them wanted to sell it except for one brother. Wow. And he said, I'm the black sheep of the family. And all we had to do was just get and talk to him and find out what was his hurt, what was his concern build a relationship with him. Once we did, it resolved it. And that's kind of where our company scripture, you know, Proverbs 3, it just, you know, I looked at it, I liked one through five, I liked one through six, finally said, I like one through 35. <laughs> wow. uh, it just really summed it all up. But wow. the thing was building the relationships. Um, and again, if you want to do real estate like us or anything like that, you can go to our website, jimmyreed.net. You can even check out a book we wrote because people were always, when I was teaching, were nervous and fearful. We wrote a book called No Fear Real Estate. It's out there. Check the Amazons, all that sort of uh, book star, uh, stores out there. You'll find it. But again, I want to thank you, Brandon, for bringing me on. Uh, always good information from Brandon. Come visit the club. Uh, this year, we've got a lot of great guests, including a local judge that's going to talk about evictions. And there's a lot of issues in there, too, with probates and that. You know, Brandon, what I love about Jimmy and yourself is the just the impassioned uh, a heart for what you do. Uh, you, you, you're you serving people in a very unique and a very important way, and I commend both of you for what you do. Uh, it's, it's it's so very crucial, especially in this time when, uh, you know, it's just frightening to know that, that over 50, perhaps even 60 percent of, of people that are listening do not have a financial plan, a trust, a will. They don't have their, their, uh, their affairs in order, basically, right? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, Ron, and I wanted to leave you guys with a little bit of information here. Please do. At the uh, Academy, we do a lot of seminars, and these are free seminars that are open to the public. Um, no cost to you. It's an hour of your time. We'll feed you a little bit of food, and uh, and you can get some wonderful information. And you can go to, our, to the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys website for a comprehensive list of all the upcoming seminars. And I wanted to mention my seminars I have coming up early this year, 2016, uh, January 11th at 6 p.m. at the Keller Public Library. January 13th, six, excuse me, 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. at the Keller Public Library. And January 26th, 6 p.m. at the Colleyville City Center. And January 28th at 6 p.m. at the Colleyville City Center. And January 29th at 11 a.m. at the Colleyville City Center. So we also have more offered both in Collin County and Dallas County uh, early this year. So please check out our website, and we'd love to have any and all of you guys uh, visit us at one of our seminars. Thank yeah. you. And certainly on the, on the website, you can get all that information that uh, Brandon just mentioned, dfwaepa.com. And the number to call to find out more, uh, and uh, again, the main number that we wanted to uh, to give you to, to, to make a phone call for if, if your questions or anything you'd like to make a phone call about, 817-877-9944. Uh, Jimmy Reed, thank you, brother. Uh, appreciate hey, appreciate you it very much. Brandon, uh, we will see uh, you soon again here. Uh, certainly will run. One of the attorneys next week, and certainly we'll see you around these microphones very soon again. Thank you guys so very much for what you do and what you do so very well. Uh, you've been listening to the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys, attorneys that you can count on for your estate planning needs. Join us again next Monday at 10 right here on KEXB. Now, for information on free Academy Seminar dates, just visit their website, dfwaepa.com, or to schedule an appointment with an Academy member, you can email info at dfwaepa.com. This has been a production of the DFW Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys. All information and opinions provided during this broadcast for informational purposes only and do not constitute an attorney-client relationship. Thanks for joining us here on Texas Money and Business. Thank you for listening to Texas Money and Business on 620.